I want to talk to you about an idea that was created last summer, a year ago, at this place called Singularity University in Silicon Valley. Singularity University is a pretty magical place. Every year, around 80 students from more than 30 countries gather there to think about exponentially advancing technologies and come up with solutions that can help resolve humanity's grand challenges. Our mandate is to come up with solutions that can have positive impact to one billion people within 10 years. I led the team that created a radical solution to address poverty in the developing world. There is 1.4 billion people living in extreme poverty today. As we started looking into the problem of poverty, we realized that it's really a problem of lack of access. One billion people do not have access to all season roads. Imagine this. One billion people. One seventh of the Earth's population are disconnected from all social and economic activity for some part of the year. They cannot get medicine reliably. They cannot get goods. They cannot get their goods to market in order to find a sustainable path out of poverty. Now, mainstream thinking suggests that these nations should invest in building roads following the lead of the developed world. It's a pretty tall order. It's estimated that in some countries it may take them 50 years to catch up. So we saw that and we thought this is an impossibility. There has to be another way. So we asked the question, can these countries leapfrog? After all, many of these nations have excellent telecommunications today, but they've never put copper lines in the ground. Could we do the same for transportation? We believe we can. Imagine this scenario. You are in a maternity ward in Mali, and you have a newborn in need of urgent medication. What do you do? Well, you place a request via mobile phone. Somebody gets, gets a request immediately. That part works. But the medicine may take days to arrive. That's the part that's broken. We believe we can fix this. We believe we can deliver the medicine within hours or even minutes with an electric, autonomous medical supply vehicle such as this. This can transport a small payload today, about two kilograms, over a short distance, about 10 kilometers. But it's part of a wider network that may cover a bigger region or even the entire continent. It's an ultra-flexible, automated logistics network. We call it the Matternet. We use three basic technologies. The first is autonomous electric flying vehicles. These are vehicles for different ranges, different payload capacities, and they fly autonomously. This is the key ingredient in that technology. The second aspect of this technology is the landing stations. These are transit locations on the ground where we fly in and out of in order to swap, to swap batteries and fly further or pick up or deliver a load. And the third is the operating system that runs the whole network. It does the routing for all the vehicles to make sure that we avoid adverse weather conditions, uh, avoid other risk factors, make sure that we meet, we match supply to demand, and so forth. So, again, the beauty of this technology is its autonomy. You know, there's no pilot needed in order to fly those vehicles. They fly using GPS waypoints from one landing station to the next. Once they arrive at a landing station, they swap battery and load automatically. This is the heart of our system. So here we are. We think that we are maybe inventing a new paradigm for transportation which is based on the ideas of the internet that are already tested. It's decentralized, it's peer-to-peer, -peer, it's bottom-up, it's dematerialized, and you know what? It turns out that it's amazingly cost-effective. In order to transport two kilograms over 10 kilometers, the cost is only 24 cents to the dollar when the technology matures. Imagine this, 24 cents to transport two kilograms over 10 kilometers. We see loads of applications for this sort of system. Mega cities are in urgent need of some new courier transportation technology solution. We build mega cities today at an unprecedented pace. China itself adds a city the size of the city of New York every two years. The big problem of them, congestion. Many cities, like the city of Sao Paulo, for instance, need to keep the economy flowing, and they employ hundreds of thousands of motorboys. There is a huge social problem, 500, of people, you know, 500 people die on the street every year. Beyond that, it's not a scalable solution, it's not a modern solution. 
we believe we can create a layer of transportation that sits between the internet and the road. It's autonomous, it's scalable, it's efficient, it works day and night, automated, 24-7, just like the internet. So imagine this. Imagine what we can do with this technology. We believe that Matternet can do for the transportation of matter what the internet did for the flow of information. Now, at the other end of extreme end of our applications, not where we have high densities and roads are not efficient, but where we have very low density populations, rural areas in Africa, for instance, and you know, it doesn't make sense to build a road. What do we do there with this technology? Imagine if we were able to connect rural clinics in Africa with hospitals in order to give them instant access to medication within minutes or hours, or help transport HIV or TB samples from clinics to hospital labs, it would give us an amazing and fair advantage towards battling those epidemics of HIV, TB, you know, you name it, around the world, there's different challenges. Now, we've been working on this technology for about a year now, and I think the, the single strongest desire we had, thank you, was to develop enough technology to allow us to go out in the field and try it. So I'm very glad to say to you today that three days ago we came back from our first field trials in the Dominican Republic and Haiti. I would like to show you a short clip from one of our missions there. So this is us flying in Port-au-Prince, and uh, this is flying above the camp. It was set up after the 2010 earthquake. It still houses tens of thousands of people. So this is an onboard camera. We fly just outside the tent that houses the surgery to this camp, and we deliver medicine. It was incredible. The whole trip was transformational for us. And we started sort of being philosophical about it and thought, you know, what on earth can make a small bunch of individuals start from a vision like this that is like, you know, an audacious vision at best, a crazy idea at worst, and, you know, make a little bit of that vision a reality within the space of a few months. And I think it came down to this. At some point, we realized that we are responsible and actually we are enabled to create the future that we want to see. So I invite all the engineers here today, all the creative minds, all the doers and all the thinkers, all the young people in the audience and whoever is watching, to do the same. Use your imagination, dream up the future that you'd like to see. Don't stop there. Go out and create it. I think the world needs us to do better than those legacy solutions when they don't work. And whoever is inspired by our mission, please come join us, help us transform the lives of a billion people. Thank you. So, this is the first delivery in the world of a Red Cross um, first aid medical package. We think we can start from here and do much more. Thank you.